Item number, SCP-420. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-420 is to be contained in storage locker 1014-420. At site, level three clearance is required to remove it from storage. Samples of SCP-421 not in use for testing should be stored in the container marked SCP-421 Decon in Locker 1014-420 until they lose potency, at which time they can be disposed of as biohazardous liquid waste. Please make note of the time and date in the attached log when samples of SCP-421 are added to the decon container. Those infected with SCP-422 are non-contagious and should be contained in standard solitary D-class secure confinement. On reaching Phase 3, infectees' rations should be doubled. Phase 4 infectees should be kept under constant surveillance for signs of advancement to Phase 6, in which case, the infected must be destroyed by high temperature incineration. Description SCP-420 is a dirty bottle of whiskey with no lid. When emptied, a small amount of whiskey-like liquid, SCP-421, remains in the bottle, appearing as liquid adhering to the sides. This liquid pulls back into a few millimeters of SCP-421 over time. Drinking SCP-421 will cause SCP-422, a non-fatal but consuming degeneration and mutation of skin and keratinous tissue, hair, fingernails, etc., in the infected. Cases of SCP-422 should be contained for further study. Early cases can be treated. SCP-422 has only been shown to affect humans. SCP-420 cannot be washed out. Liquid added in turns into SCP-421. When poured out, SCP-421 retains its properties for up to 48 hours. Chemical analysis shows no anomalies in SCP-421 before or after loss of potency. It is identical to brand whiskey when potent, and has all the same effects in addition to causing SCP-422. When it loses its potency, the chemical structure changes to that of concentrated urine. Your analysis of decontaminated SCP-421 shows that it belongs to a human male, approximate age 50, with severe liver degeneration. Further analysis using Data Expunged shows that the urine contains trace quantities of Data Expunged, consistent with SCP- SCP-422's infection progress varies somewhat from patient to patient but can be described in several phases. Detailed descriptions for therapeutic purposes can be found in Medical Document 420-A4. Brief descriptions for containment purposes follow. Phase 1. Immediately to 12 hours after consuming SCP-421, the infected's mouth becomes dry and swollen, leading to slurred speech. Note that this slurred speech is not consistent with intoxication. Recording 420C-004, attached, contains a comparison of speech patterns, resulting from intoxication compared with SCP-422. Within 24 hours of consuming SCP-421, the infected's finger and toenails become extremely brittle, cracking up the finger and bleeding. Fingernail growth is at the same time accelerated. Ingrown nails are an inevitability. Infection of these ingrown nails and open sores is identical to uninfected subjects. The infected's hair exhibits similar characteristics. Phase 2 One to two weeks after Phase 1, the infected's skin becomes brittle and dry, cracking and sloughing off. Like nails and hair, growth is also accelerated, replacing lost tissue and growing more in heavy, thick folds. Genetic analysis of keratinocytes shows mutations, similar to skin cancer. The tissue undergoes additional vascularization similar to cancer cell metastasis. Though apparently cancerous, these cells have not shown any tendency for detachment, resulting in systemic spread. Thus, Phase 2 is not malignant. Even if Phase 2 keratinocytes are injected into the blood, 
They will reattach to the skin layer or die. Innervation of the site is fully functional. Growth of the skin folds inside the infectee's mouth prevents communication. Although, growth progresses such that the infected can still breathe and eat. Infectees show a complete disregard for what they eat. Only one post-phase 2 infected has been observed outside laboratory conditions. The majority of SCP-422 infectees die due to malnutrition or food poisoning, infection of open wounds, or alcohol poisoning from overconsumption of SCP-421 in this or earlier phases. Phase 3 Three to six weeks after Phase 2 the infected loses innervation of the skin and other keratinous surfaces. Nerves in the skin layer grow uncontrollably, but no longer send signals back to the central nervous system. Genetic analysis of skin samples from this time shows mutations in keratinocytes so severe as to no longer resemble human DNA. Though individual samples suggest the mutations are random, analysis of samples from different infectees shows a consistent mutational path, leading to a final genotype with relatively little variation. In other words, the skin of the infected is a different organism entirely, possibly a different species, related only to other infectees' skin. At this stage, tumors may form inside the skin layer, analogous to several types of tissue, including muscle and secretory cells. Also at this stage, the skin slows its cracking and falling apart, although it never stops entirely. It becomes a thick series of leathery folds with exposed bloody tissue beneath. Fingernails and hair grow out from the skin at apparently random locations. Phase 4 Three to seven days after Phase 3, the skin begins to twitch and writhe on its own in apparently random patterns. Differentiated tumors develop into whole surfaces of contractile and other tissues. Small throats begin to form, leading from the outside of the skin to the circulation of the host, but are mainly non-functional at this point. The host's mouth still does most of the eating, although the host itself doesn't appear to be eating now. The mouth is instead working on its own. CAT scans of the host's brain activity show panic and fear as the only dominant thoughts, and motor groups in the jaw muscle area are not recruited. Rather, chewing and swallowing are forced by the motions of the mutated skin. Phase 5 One to two days after Phase 4. Phase 4 and 5 may overlap significantly, with different portions of the skin entering Phase 5 faster than others. The twitching, writhing skin activity gives way to organized motion. The skin can now be considered a separate organism from the host. It moves the body like a puppet, albeit slowly, and exhibits extremely rudimentary intelligence. It is a scavenger organism, and opportunistic predator. The skin digests food by excreting a clear enzymaceous fluid onto proposed food, leaving it to digest and then folding the food into itself. Ingested food is taken into folds lined with thick, heavy hairs and keratinous plates leading down into the throats. Inside this mouth, a grinding net of keratinous plates breaks down food, which is then filtered and absorbed into the host's blood. Activity scans of the brain show many hosts, at this stage, have gone insane. Some, however, seem relatively calm and are processing input from eyes and ears normally. Phase 6 Most of the infected remain at Phase 5 indefinitely. The trigger which causes a shift into Phase 6 is unknown. The skin begins rapidly growing hair and keratinous teeth, increasing in mass, and data expunged. Infected patients who appear to be entering Phase 6 should be destroyed immediately by total incineration. Treatment SCP-422 can be treated in Phase 1 by aggressive radiation and chemotherapy, coupled with constant intravenous administration of Formula 420-A09T-T174B. This treatment has a 73% success rate, full removal of SCP-422, and 21% fatality. From Phase 2 onward, 
constant administration of 420-A09T-T174B will slow the progression by two to tenfold, but rarely removes it entirely. Success rate at full removal of SCP-422 drops by about 25% per day after the onset of Phase 2. Additionally, 420-A09T-T174B appears to be at least part of the trigger to entering Phase 6. 420-A09T-T174B treatment should be halted in Phase 5. Recovery Log 420 SCP-420 was found in the possession of an unidentified vagrant in United Kingdom. Agents had been sent to investigate reports of a bridge troll, which was revealed to be the aforementioned vagrant in Phase 5 of SCP-422. The vagrant's skin appeared to be using SCP-420 to create and drink SCP-421 constantly through its mouths, although its primary sustenance came via refuse, local pets, and expunged. The vagrant was collected and designated SCP-420-A. SCP-420-A perished during experimentation on 2010 and was incinerated after autopsy. Item Number SCP-447 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-447-1 is to be kept within a 50-gallon clear plastic container at all times, monitored by camera by a security level 3 or higher staff member to prevent overflow. Area is to be maintained at level 1 clean room status to prevent contamination by foreign matter at a site at least 10 kilometers from any cemetery, morgue, or mortuary. Under no circumstances is SCP-447 to be allowed to come into contact with dead bodies. Because SCP-447-1 constantly excretes a viscous greenish slime, designated SCP-447-2, at a rate of approximately 10 cc's an hour, a Class D personnel in good physical condition is to be detailed to harvest the excreted slime at least once per day. SCP-447-2 can be harvested using any appropriate equipment, so long as safety procedures are carefully adhered to in order to prevent on-site fatalities. Slime can be transported in an ordinary sealed glass or plastic container through any standard mode of transportation, provided that there is no risk of the slime coming into contact with a dead body en route. Although malodorous, the slime harvested from SCP-447-1 is non-toxic, non-corrosive, and non-radioactive. It is, in fact, perfectly safe, so long as it does not come into contact with a dead body. The slime is edible, and reportedly makes a good salad dressing. Adding 10 cc of SCP-447-2 to 1 gallon of gasoline improves fuel efficiency by 150%. Furthermore, SCP-447-2 can be refined into a useful lubricant, approved for use in all SCP Foundation installations, so long as said lubricant is never used to lubricate dead bodies. All staff assigned to SCP-447 are to be screened by polygraph for any suicidal, necrophiliac, or homicidal tendencies. In addition, all staff assigned to SCP-447 must be in good health and good physical condition and must adhere to on-site safety regulations at all times. This is to minimize the risk of SCP-447, or its generated slime, coming into contact with a dead body. Description: SCP-447-1 is a green sphere, approximately 5 centimeters in diameter, with a spongy surface texture and a weight of 1.37 kilograms. The object is warm to the touch, approximately the same temperature as a human body, although its core temperature is slightly higher. Personnel handling SCP-447-1 have reported no adverse effects, so long as SCP-447-1 does not come into contact with a dead body. SCP-447 was retrieved by Foundation agents on in the city of California, United States of America. The incident clearly illustrates the danger inherent in allowing either SCP-447 unit to come into contact with a dead body. The dangers of allowing SCP-447-1 or 2 to come into contact with dead bodies have been clearly documented. Detailed eyewitness reports can be found in Appendix 447-B. Prior Incidents To summarize, however, initial effects include Data expunged per O5 level directive 
Research into this field forbidden upon pain of immediate termination or demotion to Class D. Please contact your supervisor for more details. Addendum 447A SCP-447 downgraded from Keter to safe. So long as security measures are in place to prevent SCP-447 from coming into contact with dead bodies. Please see Experiment Log 447A for further potential applications of SCP-447. Experiment Log 447A Experiment Log for SCP-447-2 Approved by O5 Project Head Dr. A. Clef Date Expunged Test Subject SCP-882 Procedure SCP-447-2 was refined into a lubricant. SCP-882 was temporarily removed from its seawater bath, and SCP-447-2 applied as lubricant to all joints and connections. Results Although SCP-447-2 was successful in reducing grinding and noise by 50%, it was also successful in removing rust from the structure. SCP-882 was immediately returned to its seawater bath and staff on hand were placed in quarantine for examination. Notes Let's not try that again, shall we? Dr. A. Clef Date Expunged Test Subject One guinea pig, purchased from pet shop. Procedure Subject was immersed in SCP-4472 for five minutes. Care was taken to keep the subject's head above the level of the fluid, to prevent the death of the test subject. Results. Subject's fur became saturated with the fluid. Test item required several hours of grooming to remove SCP-4472 from its fur. No further deleterious effects reported. Notes. After careful washing to remove all traces of SCP-4472 from its fur, subject was subsequently consumed by Agent who is of Peruvian descent. Said agent reported that the meat was, in his own words, the best kuyi I've ever had. Approval for testing of SCP-4472 as a marinade is currently on hold, pending review of whether or not a steak constitutes a dead body. Date Expunged Test Subject 1 Tablet SCP-500 Procedure Subject was immersed in SCP-4472 for 5 minutes. Results In addition to curing all diseases, Subject now also leaves the patient's breath feeling minty fresh. Notes About what was expected. Seriously, guys, what were you thinking would happen? Dr. A. Clef Date Expunged Test Subject SCP-76-2 Procedure 500 milliliters of SCP-4472 was added to 500 milliliters distilled vodka and two dozen ice cubes, shaken well, and strained into a pitcher. Approximately 0.2 liters of the mixture were poured into a glass with mint and a lime garnish. Mixture was taken to SCP-76-2, who was told, Hey Abel, try this, it's pretty good. Results SCP-76-2 agreed that the mixture was, in his words, refreshing, but immediately lost interest when told of SCP-4472's interaction with dead bodies. Notes: Because of SCP-76-2's tendency to become and or create dead bodies, further contact with SCP-447 is forbidden. Date: Expunged. Test subject: One Pentium 4 computer, 1.5 gigahertz with data expunged. Procedure Subject was immersed in SCP-4472 for five minutes, with the power cord unplugged. Results Subject became caked in goo, and no longer functions. Notes Whoever came up with this one should be kicked in the head. Dr. A. Clef Date Expunged Test Subject SCP-63 Procedure Dr. used SCP-447 instead of toothpaste to brush his teeth with SCP-63. Results Given that Dr. doesn't need to use toothpaste to begin with, not much really. Notes What is with you people? Dr. A. Clef Date 
Expunged. Test subject. One dead body. Notes. Test was aborted. The scientist who made the proposal has been reassigned as Class D personnel. Notes. Two. Seriously, guys. How hard is it to understand? No. Dead. Bodies. None. Nada. Nine. Don't think about it. Don't joke about it. And most certainly, don't do it. Sheesh. Dr. A. Clef. Date. Expunged. Test subject. Dr. A. Clef. Procedure. Dr. A. Clef was ambushed in the hallway, dragged into a room with a bathtub full of SCP-447-2, and immersed for approximately 25 seconds. Results. Subject became irate, and threatened to kill staff members carrying out the experiment, if it were not for the fact that doing so would violate experimental protocol. Notes. As soon as this mess is cleaned up, you will all be missed. Dr. A. Clef. Date. Expunged. Test subject. Potassium nitrate sugar mix. Procedure. A spoonful of SCP-447 was added to the mix of potassium nitrate and sugar in order to make a makeshift smoke grenade. Results. Not only did the new mix slow down the combustion in such a way that the generated smoke was ten times greater and lasted approximately five minutes longer than the original mix, but it also colored the smoke with a green tint and left it with a minty smell. Notes. Not bad for a three dollar smoke grenade. Although this wouldn't work so well in the field, the odds of the smoke reaching a dead body are just too high. Date. Expunged. Test subject. Professor Snyder. Procedure. Two drops. One microliter each of SCP-447. One in each of Professor Snyder's eyes. Note that Professor Snyder has an astigmatism and normally wears corrective eyewear. Results. Vision was clear and focused for six hours, though Professor Snyder reported to now see everything in a green tint. Subject's eyesight soon returned to normal, though both eyes are now a much more brilliant green than before. Notes. Oh well. I look better with my glasses anyway. Professor Snyder. Notes 2. This might be marketable as vision correction, but people might notice the extra green. Regardless. I'd like to request a couple of liters of this stuff for personal use. Agent Marr. Date. Expunged. Test subject. 8 ounce, 236 milliliter glass of skim milk. Procedure. 2 teaspoons, 10 milliliters, of SCP-447 thoroughly stirred into milk. Results. Milk turned a bright green in color and was slightly thicker with a slight minty flavor. Chemical analysis later indicated that the concoction was now lactose-free. Notes. You know, we might be able to market this stuff. I'm pretty sure dead bodies don't drink milk. Professor Snyder. Date. Expunged. Test subject. 15 pounds, 6.8 kilograms, quick dry cement. Procedure. Cement powder and 5 gallons or 19 liters of SCP-447 rotated inside a standard miniature cement mixer. Results. Mixture took on a green tinge and solidified to a hardness 50% greater than normal concrete, though it took twice as long to dry. Notes. It seems promising, but it's time consuming to make, and the risks of a dead body falling on a slab of this stuff is too high. Professor Snyder. Date. Expunged. Test subject. Two cups of water. 475 milliliters. Procedure. One tablespoon. 15 milliliters. Of SCP-447-2 thoroughly stirred into water. Results. Water turned a green tint but is otherwise normal. Contaminants reduced by 78%. Notes. This would make a good chlorine substitute for swimming pools. All the cleanliness of chlorinated water without the bleachy smell or hair discoloration. Too bad some swimmers are careless and turn into dead bodies. Dr. Ray A. Date. Expunged. 
Test Subject One Pizza Produced by SCP-458 Procedure One small sauce cup of SCP-447-2 is held in one hand by Agent Palinuk, while the other holds SCP-458. Results No outward change in the composition of SCP-447-2 is evident. SCP-458 produced a hamburger pizza on a cheese-stuffed crust. After dipping a slice in SCP-447-2 and ingesting, Agent Palinuk noted the taste of the substance was like a creamy Italian dressing. Following his consumption of the pizza, Agent Palinuk's breath was said to be minty fresh. He then proceeded to hoard the pizza box to himself for a few hours. Notes Though this brings up new indication into the nature of SCP-458, nothing remarkable has come to attention from this, other than Pal's tendency to overeat. Slight psychological therapy may be in order. Dr. Del Marino I'd suggest we market this stuff as a dressing, but people eating lots of pizza on a regular basis tend to become dead bodies, so... Agent Palinuk Date Expunged Test Subject One Cellular Phone Procedure Phone is placed in one small plastic container holding one liter of SCP-447-2 and left to sit for five minutes with power off and battery disconnected. Results Phone is ruined and subsequently destroyed in a nearby furnace. The ashes and fumes from the burning phone were reported to be green and minty in scent. Notes Hey, has anyone seen my phone? Agent Palinuk Date Expunged Test Subject One Trojan Condom Procedure Dr. A placed the condom on his data expunged and applied SCP-447-2 onto it. He then tested the SCP-447-2 covered condom by data expunged. Results Data expunged Dr. A reports that the procedure quote went really well. Notes. I could market this as that kind of lubricant, but I don't think a warning label is enough to ensure that some necrophiliac doesn't use it on a dead body. Dr. A. Date. Expunged. Test subject. Three cars. One 2006 Honda Civic. 106 Dodge Stratus. 106 Chevy Malibu. Procedure. SCP-447 was used as liquids in each vehicle mixed equally with oil, used as window washer fluid, and mixed into the radiator. Results Each car had each liquid added individually. The various components of each engine performed with superb results. The Honda's radiator did not overheat until temperatures reached in excess of 340 degrees Celsius, more than twice the average temperature of a vehicle. The water seemed to be tinted green, even after being drained. The Stratus' windshield was cleaned to factory new perfection and resisted dirt and grime after use. Side effect described as green-tinted glass. The Malibu's engine components were lubricated to perfection and lasted over 160,000 miles on a dynamometer. Exhaust was tinted green. Notes Impressive, but given the intelligence of some drivers, the chance of dead bodies contaminating the sample is too high. Dr. Axe Date Expunged Test Subject One Roll of Duct Tape Procedure SCP-447 was applied to the adhesive side of a strip of duct tape, which was subsequently attached to a cement brick. Results Tape had bonded to the cement with twice the strength expected of a normal strip. Cement brick was left with a green stain in the shape of the strip of tape. Notes this could be marketable, but with all the possible uses for duct tape comes the even greater risk of coming into contact with dead bodies. Dr. Slav Date Expunged Test Subject Nuclear Reactor at Site Procedure During the regular maintenance, leaders of SCP-447-2 were added to the moderator material in the reactor. Results the moderation of neutrons was increased by leading to very high thermal output and temperature alarms being activated. The reactor's chamber gained a green tinge and faint mint smell. Notes Effective, 
but the chance of an explosion and radioactive slime reaching dead bodies over a large area is too high. Dr. Kotska Notes 2 Dr. Kotska has been incarcerated and sent to a corrective facility for unauthorized and extremely dangerous testing. 05 Date Expunged Test Subject One Colt Python Revolver with an 8-inch barrel Procedure Gun was taken apart for regular cleaning. The cleaning cloth was put in a small tub of SCP-447-2 and soaked for five minutes. Cleaned as normally would. Lubrication replaced with SCP-447-2. Results Gun fired with a 35% reduction in recoil. Testing found bullets fired had their maximum speed increased by nearly 210% and acceleration increased by 55%. Accuracy was increased by 3.7% at close range, and by 486% at maximum range. Max range was also increased by 40%. Gun smoke was green in tint. Interestingly, unspent ammunition put into the gun were stated to smell minty and had a green tint. Despite this, when these bullets were removed and fired from another gun, said gun did not receive any benefits. Notes. The more testing we do, the more I begin to wonder how more advanced technology would be. If only this damned dead body curse didn't exist. This stuff would benefit us in so many ways. This test shows that guns would become extremely efficient, but then again, guns are used to kill people, so you will run into a dead guy at some point. Notes 2 I suppose we COULD use this in a combat situation, but only as a last resort, and even then we'd have to be careful. Dr. Clinton Date Expunged Test Subject One liter of candle wax Procedure Wax was added to SCP-4472 in a 2 to 1 ratio of wax to SCP-4472. A candle wick was dipped into the wax to create a candle. Results The candle gave off 50% more light at a distance of 10 meters, and also gave off a strong smell of mint as it burned. However, the candle burnt out in roughly half the time of a candle made solely out of wax, and was far more difficult to extinguish, requiring a CO2 fire extinguisher to put out. Notes: While it may seem like a good idea to market it, the mint smell was far too strong to the point of being nauseating. The candle also burns out too quickly to be used as a source of light as well. I suppose you could use it as an air freshener, but seeing how dangerous fire can be and how hard it is to put out, well, let's just say there's a good chance of it coming into contact with a dead body somewhere down the line. Date Expunged Test Subject SCP-586 Procedure 10 milliliters of SCP-4472 was directly applied to SCP-586. Results No noticeable cha-chas to structure, composition, or effect of SCP-586 were noted. However, SCP-586 became more violently luminescent in its shade of gray, and was reported afterwards to smell strongly of mint. Notes: I see no point in continuing this line of zesting, but it is safe. Very little chance of dank bodies here. Dr. Date Expunged Test Subject SCP-914 Procedure one liter of SCP-4472 in a cylindrical glass container was placed in SCP-914 and refined on the rough setting. Results: Ten cylindrical glass containers, all exactly one-tenth the mass of the original container, each holding 100 milliliters of SCP-4472. Notes: Well, what did you expect? Dr. Date Expunged Test Subject SCP-914 Procedure 1 liter of SCP-4472 in a cylindrical glass container was placed in SCP-914 and refined on the coarse setting. Results 1 liter of SCP-4472 in a cylindrical glass container. All SCP-4472 recovered in this manner gradually degraded to an unknown fluid with similar composition to Terciops truncatus with a half-life of two hours. Notes 
After most of it is sufficiently degraded, I suggest this new fluid be run through similar tests as were conducted before. Dr. Notes 2. Agent R, head cook at site, reports that this new fluid has a simple and rustic, yet surprisingly compelling flavor, and has requested 5 liters for culinary use. Request denied. Date. Expunged. Test subject. SCP-914. Procedure. One liter of SCP-4472 in a cylindrical glass container was placed in SCP-914 and refined on the one-to-one -one setting. Results. A dead body. Notes. Further cross-testing of SCP-4472 with SCP-914 has been enjoined by order of 05 Date. Expunged. Test subject. 2 liters of brand paint primer. Procedure. 250 milliliters of SCP-4472 was mixed thoroughly into the paint primer. Results. The primer took on a green hue and started to smell minty. The resulting paint was approximately 200% more opaque when compared to a different can of primer. Notes. This would be marketed in home improvement stores, but the chances of a dead body coming into contact with painted surfaces is too high, plus the smell of mint is overpowering when a whole room is painted with the primer. Date. Expunged. Test subject. One pair of Adidas brand running shoes. Size 12. Procedure. 10 liters of SCP-4472 was poured into a standard hardware store bucket. The pair of Adidas shoes were submerged in SCP-4472 for 5 minutes and removed. Shoes were then applied to researcher Ortiz's feet. Results. Rubber and sole increased by 37% in density, allowing subject to run slightly faster. Shoelaces became 13% more rigid, slightly decreasing the chance of the knot coming unraveled. Shoes emitted a minty scent. Notes. We could market this as some kind of shoe conditioner, but I seem to be aware of the fact that many dead bodies wear shoes. Researcher Ortiz. Date. Expunged. Test subject. A variety of clothing belonging to Dr. Levy. Procedure. 100 milliliters of SCP-4472 was used as a substitute for fabric conditioner in a washing machine. Dr. Levy's clothes were washed for 30 minutes after which the clothes were dried and worn by Dr. Levy. Results. The clothing seemed more resistant to rips and tears, as well as shrinking. Dr. Levy reported that the clothes felt more comfortable than before. Clothes took on a slight green tinge, as well possessing a slightly minty smell. Notes. We could market this as a fabric conditioner, though some people might not like the green tinge in the smell. Plus, there's the problem that dead bodies are often clothed. Dr. Levy. Date. Expunged. Test subject. Dr. Hakila's hand. Procedure. A drop of SCP-4472 was placed on the back of the subject's hand via an eyedropper. Results. Dr. Hakila proceeded to slap a nearby researcher across the face. The researcher said that they had a minty taste in their mouth after being slapped. Dr. Hakila proceeded to do the same to someone else, but the effect had worn off. Notes. First of all, why? Second of all, why did we let him do it? Dr. A. Clef. Date. Expunged. Test subject. A ballpoint pen. Procedure. The ink cartridge was infused with 0.5 milliliters of SCP-4472. Results. Anything written with the pen became approximately 27% clearer and gained a greenish tint. A slight minty smell also started emanating from the ink. Notes. This could be great to market to children. Scented pens. And I don't think there's much of a likelihood of it coming into contact with dead bodies. Although you can never be too safe. Dr. Aherna. Date. Expunged. Test subject. 1-11045-T5 Wire Stripper Procedure Metal portion of subject was submerged in SCP-4472 for 30 seconds 
and used to strip 12 AWG copper NMS cable. Results. Any insulation was easily peeled off regardless of improper use of the tool, but stuck to the T5s and had to be removed by hand. Notes. This would make the lives of new electricians so much easier. Unfortunately, they could be careless and get shocked to death while holding on to this. Dr. A. Clef. Date. Expunged. Test subject. One standard sized tub of Legos. Procedure. Tub was filled and submerged in SCP-4472 for one minute and used to create a variety of items. Results. Builders state that the directions just kind of come to us. We don't even need to look at the manual. Bricks also turned lime green and have a faint mint smell. Notes. The only reason I say we shouldn't market this is the fact that a small child could choke on it. Then we have an entire new thing to deal with. Dr. Markman. Formally requesting this tub for recreational use. They're really addicting. Dr. Sanders. Accepted. Have fun. Dr. Markman. Date. Expunged. Test subject. One of each Foundation security keycard tier leading up to four. Procedure. Keycards were left to dip in SCP-4472 for one hour, then tested on pre-made keycard testing doors. Results. All keycards had their numbers erased and replaced with the level two tiers above their own. All cards performed with their respective new numbers. Notes. Requesting an extra level 4 keycard and one liter of SCP-4472. Dr. Sanders. <laughs> no. Dr. Markman. Date. Expunged. Test subject. Two AA batteries. Procedure. Batteries were submerged in SCP-4472 for 30 minutes, then inserted into Dr. Clinton's flashlight, which was then shown until batteries were out of power. Results. Both batteries lasted roughly 28% longer than usual and were tinted a light green. The light from the flashlight was also a light green. Notes. Alright, this we can probably use. Pretty sure dead bodies can't use batteries, but uh, someone may want to make sure that the green light doesn't have the same properties as the normal slime. Dr. Clinton. Nope. Batteries have a tendency to cause dead bodies when around babies. Dr. Engelhart. Date. Expunged. Test subject. 10 M202A1 flash rockets. Procedure. Rockets were coated in SCP-4472 for 50 minutes, loaded into an M202A1 flash to test explosion size, flame duration, and accuracy. Results. The explosion size remained the same. The flames post-detonation lasted 10% longer, along with having a greenish tint. No temperature difference noted. No difference in accuracy. Notes. Well, the accuracy of it isn't improved because it's not the rocket launcher itself. It's the rockets. Weapons researcher person. Weapons researcher person. It is requested that you not do this again. Weapons have a way of creating dead bodies. Actually, wait a moment. How did you even get in? With a weapon? Senior researcher... I have my ways. Weapons researcher person. Date. Expunged. Test subject. One urn. Procedure. Urn was polished on the inside and outside with a mix of polish and SCP-4472 at a 3 to 1 ratio. Results. Experiment was interrupted just as ashes from a dead body were about to be put in. Notes. Ashes? from dead bodies are dead bodies too. I don't care how curious you are, but no ashes from dead bodies. Dr. A. Clef. Date. Expunged. Test subject. SCP-999. Procedure. SCP-999 was submerged in SCP-4472 for two minutes. Results. SCP-999 exhibited a green tint for five hours and, in addition to curing depression, 
gave the subject green eyes. Notes. Hmm, SCP-999 looked pretty cool, and we may be able to do this again. We could even reconsider marketing it as an antidepressant. Dr. Fall. No. Dr. A. Clef. Date. Expunged. Test subject. One katana. Procedure. The katana was submerged in SCP-4472 for five minutes. Results. The katana emerged with a distinct green tinge to the blade. Dr. Clef confiscated the katana before any tests could be conducted on its performance. Notes. Are you maniacs trying to give me a nervous breakdown? The whole point of a sword is to kill people! Dr. A. Clef. Date. Expunged. Test subject. One vial of SCP-4472. Aged 30 days. Procedure. The vial was submerged in SCP-4472 for five minutes. After that period of time, the vial was removed. The contents poured onto the top of the SCP-4472 solution for five minutes. Results. Vial was tightly sealed. It's simultaneously easy to remove. The solution within the vial turned a bright green and gave off an extremely minty odor, now designated SCP-4473. Notes. I really thought this was going to go nowhere. Maybe you slack-jawed yokels have some sort of a brain in that FedEx box of a head. Have the solution of 4473 sent to my office. I would like to personally conduct an experiment with it. Dr. A. Clef. Date. Expunged. Test subject. Two $1 bills. USD. Procedure. One bill was submerged in a cup of SCP-4472 for five minutes. The other submerged for the same amount of time within a cup of SCP-4473, referenced above. Results. The bill submerged in SCP-4472 became a US $100 bill. The bill submerged within SCP-4473 became a US $2,500 bill, which, according to the US Hall of Records, never existed, yet is completely usable in a marketplace environment. The bill was removed from circulation shortly after by an MTF team, by command of Dr. A. Clef. Notes. Why would you send that into circulation? Who knows what could happen to that bill out there? Dr. A. Clef. Ooh, I wonder what we can do with this 4473 stuff. Maybe we could make better and better liquid, like Inception. Dr. Bright. Request denied. We're playing with forces we don't understand here, Jack. Dr. A. Clef. Dr. Bright. Date. Expunged. Test subject. A copy of The Phantom Toll Booth. Procedure. Book was immersed in SCP-4472 for 20 seconds. Results. Book became green and gained a minty smell. Notes. I realized a bit too late that paper might constitute as the dead body of a tree. We really dodged a bullet on that one. Still, let's not try to push the envelope any further. Dr. Norms. Item number. SCP-475. Object Class. Safe. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-475 is to be kept in a watertight containment locker in Storage Unit 45C of Site-36. All testing with para-religions requires permission from the Site Director. To prevent religious groups of interest from learning of the object's existence, knowledge of SCP-475 is to follow Level 3 Info Security Protocol. Description SCP-475 is an ornate sculpture of soap, depicting an unidentified Pope. Inscribed at the base of the statue is the phrase, Cleanliness is next to godliness. Analysis reveals the object to be composed of long-chain saturated fatty acids, CH3 minus CH2N, totaling 89.7% of its mass, with the remaining 10.3% corresponding to attached as the hydrophilic head. It is believed that the gives SCP-475 its unique properties. But all attempts to recreate this compound have failed. 
When SCP-475 comes into contact with water and is applied to the skin, all accumulated foreign contaminants are removed. Tested materials include dead skin cells, perspiration, bodily parasites, mold, dirt, and detergents. Post-test examinations have shown that 100% of foreign contaminants are removed, a statistical anomaly. This process only occurs when used on human skin. All attempts so far to use SCP-475 on non-humans have failed to produce its anomalous effects. Testing on anomalous animals, such as SCP-1845 or SCP-2050, is pending approval. Unlike typical soaps, the usage of SCP-475 does not damage it. SCP-475's secondary anomalous effects manifest when it is used on a professing member of an organized religion. Subjects universally report greater mental clarity, showing greater adherence to church doctrine, and rate at least 15 centi a kiva more on the Brandon Spencer piety scale. These effects increase in intensity the longer the subject uses the object, culminating in local reality changes, signified by all bodies of water within a 5 meter radius, turning into an equivalent liquid that is considered holy in the subject's religion. Examples of these changes can be found in Test Log 475. Addendum SCP-475 came under Foundation containment when insubordinate elements of the Horizon Initiative relinquished control of it. These elements cited a desire to maintain unity and prevent infighting as to why the object could not be kept. SCP-475 was allegedly recovered from the residence of the Catholic Cardinal who was found deceased from injuries consistent with upside-down crucifixion. The following materials were also provided. Access Memoirs of Access Granted I write this document to preserve the personal revelation invested in me. Over these past years, I have grappled with my faith. Having committed it to paper, the idea seems absurd. I, a leader of the faith, I, whose vote has determined the successor of Peter. I, who has undeniable proof of God's glory. The initiative, for all of its missteps and blasphemy, has provided undeniable proof of God's glory. Proof that has to be withheld from the world due to inscrutable agreements with occult forces who do not have salvation in mind. Despite this undeniable proof, I wrestled with fears that God is not almighty. How can a god so glorious and almighty stand by as false idols exert their forces over man? By the grace of God, my fears have been quelled. The night before, I beheld an apparition of Mary. To try to capture the glory of it would be futile, but it is an experience too magnificent to withhold. We were out at sea. Below the waves, I could see the church penitent, awaiting purification. Further below that, deep beneath, there was creation. All around us were the gilded statues of saints, each linked to a church far below us. The Virgin Mother herself was resplendent, situated atop a pedestal, the pedestal carried by a many-winged creature of fire. In her right arm, she held the Savior. In her left, a block of marble. She confided in me, told me of my purpose. Encased in the marble were the keys of heaven the church's magisterium itself, the authority to commune with saints. I was to take it, free the keys, and cleanse the church militant. Then, all will be made clear. When I woke up, there was a block of soap on my nightstand. Queer, but I do not question the machinations of God. Every day since that night has been hazy. I have worked with a fervor to accomplish this mission. Even to this moment, I have my doubts but I am human. It is in my nature to doubt. If there is one thing I can be certain of, it is that I am a cog in God's plan. Addendum SCP-475 approved for extensive testing with para-religions. Test Log 475 Note: Due to the scarcity of para-religion adherence under Foundation control, SCP has been approved to create suitable test subjects. Test subjects religion, Roman Catholicism. Duration, three minutes. Results, water transmuted into a mixture of olive oil and balsam, 
consistent with the chrism oil employed in various Catholic rituals. Stigmata manifested in subject's hands. Notes. Subject was heard reciting Confiteor as anomalous effects took place. The stigmata healed over the course of the next three days. Test subject's religion. Roman Catholicism, said a vacanist. Duration, five minutes. Results. Water transmuted into mixture of olive oil and balsam, consistent with the chrism oil employed in various Catholic rituals. No overt anomalous effects observed. Notes. Post-test interview indicated that the subject accepted the current pope as rightful Pontifex Maximus. Test subject's religion. Pentecostal. Duration. 11 minutes. Result. Water transmuted into pasteurized grape juice. Subject began exhibiting glossolalia. Subject displayed xenoglossy in the post-test interview. Notes. Subject made the following requests. Access to Site-36's sick bay. Access to any demonic entities housed on site. A pet snake. Requests denied. Test subject's religion. Hasidic Judaism. Duration. 60 minutes. Results. Testing was aborted after failure to produce anomalous results. Subject vehemently denied any change in behavior or mindset. Notes. Cant counters measured a percent increase in ambient Hume levels. Further testing warranted. Test subject's religion. Broken church. Duration. 13 minutes. Results. Water transmuted into machine oil. Subject began manifesting symptoms of SCP-217 infection. Notes. Subject was placed under quarantine. Within 48 hours, the SCP-217 infection present in its system had been rendered inert. Subject transferred to Site-234 for further study. Test subject's religion. Cogwork Orthodox. Duration. 14 minutes. Results. Water transmuted into machine oil. Subject proceeded to transform into metallic ovoid object, bearing numerous markings on the surface. Notes. Resultant object pending classification as an instance of SCP-1564. Test subject's religion. Maxwellism. Duration. 15 minutes. Results. Water transmuted into thermal adhesive. Testing terminated as subject began complaining about a splitting headache. Analysis indicates that part of subject's brain had been replaced with cybernetics, inconsistent with standard Maxwellist augments. Notes. Subject claims to have experienced a continuation of the signal, a hallucinatory vision all Maxwellists experience after undergoing implantation of their first augments. In this vision, data expunged. Test subjects religion. Neo-sarcasism. Duration. 30 minutes. Results. Water transmuted into blood. Subject began morphing into an instance of SK biotype. Testing suspended and subject sedated. Upon resumption, subject calcified into a roughly ellipsoidal object and began emitting thermal radiation in the microwave range. Notes. Further testing with neosarchic cults suspended in order to prevent apotheosis events. Subject currently in secondary storage at Site 10. Test subject's religion. Children of the Scarlet King. Duration. 45 minutes. Results. Water transmuted into blood. Subject underwent a series of transformations, turning into progressively more advanced. In the Divide caste system, Variants of the DV biotype. Transformations culminated with the subject becoming a colossal squid, Masani Chotuthis, Hamiltoni, and expiring. Notes. Genetic testing indicates that the blood is from the common sperm whale, Physeter macrocephalus. Test subject's religion. Fifthism. Duration. 25 minutes. Results. Water transmuted into 100 specimens of the subphylum Asterozoa. Subject melted into candle wax. Notes. 
suspected connections to SCP-1523. Test Subject's Religion Church of the Second Hightoth Duration 30 Minutes Results Water transmuted into blood. Subject's forehead developed pigmentation in the shape of a seven-pointed star. Subject displays previously unknown knowledge of Hytothan rituals and the language of Ortothan. Notes Analysis indicates that the blood is from the common seven-arm octopus, Halifron Atlanticus. Test Subject's Religion Children of the Torch Duration 17 Minutes Results Water transmuted into an aqueous flame, similar to those created by SCP-2814. Subject then melted into a waxy substance, yet remained modal and cognizant. Notes Subject expired after 24 hours. Remains stored on Site-23. Test Subject's Religion Australian Church of Australia Duration 1 minute Results Data expunged. Note: Further testing with the Australian Church of Australia requires unanimous approval from the O5 Council. Research into preventing AU class end of the world scenarios deemed a class 11 priority. Item number: SCP-505. Object class: Keter. Special containment procedures. SCP-505 is contained in a 50 meter by 40 meter by 10 meter room at site. SCP-505's containment area is to be sealed, other than one secure airlock, and a series of pipes allowing transport of SCP-505-1 to storage tanks in the event of SCP-505-1 reaching levels in which it poses a danger to containment. Sprayers for 4MNAOH are to be available throughout SCP-505's containment area and the rest of Site to combat a containment breach. In the event of a spill of SCP-505-1, the affected area should immediately be covered with an absorbent material. Commercial blotting paper is currently standard for this purpose, and doused with alcohol or acetone if NAOH is not immediately available. NaOH immersion is the method of choice for SCP-505-1 containment, followed by incineration of affected material, if practicable. There are currently instances of SCP-505-1 points of secondary contamination outside SCP-505's primary containment area. Containment in these areas is variable, but efforts have been made to make procedures as similar to those of the primary site if possible. Of these secondary contamination zones, they are unable to be fully contained at this time, resulting in the spread of SCP-505-1 throughout the environment. These sites are to be monitored at all times, and countermeasure development is of the highest priority. Description: SCP-505 is a model Faber-Castell fountain pen, produced in 2001. For documentation of its acquisition by the Foundation, see Addendum 505-2. It is identical in all respects to a standard fountain pen, apart from its association with SCP-505-1. SCP-505-1 is the black ink produced by SCP-505, which exhibits the property of self-replication. SCP-505-1 spreads at a variable rate, affected by the substance it comes into contact with and the amount of SCP-505-1 present. Quantities of SCP-505-1 have been shown to increase at rates between 0.5 and 540 milliliters per second. Standard ink-removing chemicals are able to partially remove SCP-505-1 and inhibit its spread. However, sodium hydroxide is necessary to remove SCP-505-1 contamination completely and has shown to be ineffective in environments with particularly high SCP-505-1 concentrations. Fortunately, the growth rate of SCP-505-1 appears to be inversely proportional to its quantity at high concentrations. Whilst the observed effects of this are negligible in most cases, this inverse growth phenomenon provides the only explanation for the partial containment of SCP-505-1. Despite a number of cases of large-scale environmental contamination, which were projected to otherwise lead to an NK-class end-of-the-world scenario. 
Whilst SCP-5051 exhibits no unusual properties other than its constant spread and partial resistance to removal, it nonetheless poses serious difficulties for control. SCP-5051 will flow across non-absorbent surfaces and pass through porous surfaces in an identical fashion to normal ink. All liquid or solid objects or beings in contact with SCP-5051 will be contaminated. SCP-5051 will still adhere to non-porous surfaces such as metals, but newly produced SCP-5051 will constantly flow off. Non-porous metals are thus catalysts for SCP-5051 spread, and all SCP-5051 contamination should be covered in porous materials, such as blotting paper for this reason. It is not possible to permanently contain SCP-5051 in a non-porous container, as said container's contents will gradually increase in quantity, leading to increased pressure and subsequent rupture. All containers being used to contain SCP-5051 must, therefore, be drained periodically to prevent a containment breach. SCP-5051's effects on its environment are identical to those of an equivalent quantity of standard fountain pen ink. SCP-5051 exposure will inevitably lead to the death of living organisms. Plant matter will be killed due to inhibition of photosynthesis, whereas animals will be killed due to chemical poisoning. In humans and other mammals, SCP-5051 contact will most likely be via the skin, where it will spread until it reaches an orifice or a break in the skin, and subsequently enter the vascular system through mucous membranes. SCP-5051 will spread through the vasculature and have catastrophic effects on all organ systems it reaches, as it continuously replicates and is unable to be excreted by the urinary system. Cause of death is generally multiple organ failure, although in most cases, affected individuals will be terminated and decontaminated prior to this. For containment procedures in these instances, see Addendum 5051. SCP-5051 also has an increased rate of spread through non-viscous fluids, such as water, as would be expected of normal ink. Any contamination of the water table with SCP-5051 must be prevented at all costs, due to the potential for an NK-class end-of-the-world scenario. It is unknown whether SCP-5051's aforementioned property of an inversely proportional rate of spread will manifest in fluids as experimentation with such high quantities of SCP-5051 is strictly forbidden. Thus, any environmental SCP-5051 contamination in water sources must be met with immediate damming and drainage into storage tanks of all affected areas. Addendum 5051 Procedures for Dealing with SCP-5051 Contamination in Humans Administration of multiple-dose activated charcoal has been shown to slow the progress of SCP-5051 contamination in humans, but is unable to halt the process. The only known methods of treatment for SCP-5051 contamination in humans are by immediate excision of the affected area, or continuous application of ethanol to an affected skin region. Topical ethanol treatment will not prevent the affected individual from transmitting SCP-5051 to other surfaces, and is thus highly discouraged, except in the cases of essential personnel, in which case, containment procedures must be observed, as in all other sites of secondary SCP-5051 contamination. In theory, excision or amputation of affected areas would be the gold standard for treatment, but contamination of surgical instruments and personnel remains a problem. Therefore, all cases of SCP-5051 contamination in humans, other than essential personnel, should be dealt with by termination, followed by standard procedure of 4M and AOH immersion and incineration of the remains. Addendum 5052 SCP-505 Retrieval History SCP-505 was acquired by the Foundation from the town of Rhyd in Oman, when the town in question was quarantined by the Omani government due to reports of a black fluid beginning to seep out from the town's post office and causing the deaths of a number of its inhabitants. Fortuitously, the arid and remote location of the incident prevented wide-scale environmental contamination of SCP-5051 
The Foundation retrieved SCP-5051 with casualties. No other anomalous properties of the town's post office or the town itself were detected. It was deemed necessary to terminate civilians who were deemed likely to be contaminated. The incident was reported as a non-extranormal chemical spill. Item Number SCP-535 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-535 is to be kept in a secure storage room at Site Standard Positive Action Defenses Explosive, Chemical, Biological, and Mimetic are to be in place at all times, according to Standard Operating Procedure. SCP-535 itself is to be placed in its own containment unit, a soundproofed lead-lined steel box of dimensions 4 meters by 4 meters by 4 meters, and of thickness no less than 5 centimeters at all points. SCP-535 is secured to a pedestal in its containment unit, such that it is positioned in the center of the box. No memetic-based SCPs are to come into contact with SCP-535. No liquid is to come into contact with SCP-535, except under controlled testing circumstances. To facilitate this, the containment unit should be sealed and contain backup dehumidification apparatus. SCP-535 should not be handled directly, except under controlled testing circumstances. If the need to handle SCP-535 arises, it should only be performed by one personnel of level 3 clearance or higher, with no other individuals present in the immediate area, and with mechanical apparatus to prevent being within one meter of SCP-535. SCP-535 is not to come in contact with other anomalies associated with information transfer, such as SCP-606. Description SCP-535 appears to be an ordinary 250 milliliter borosilicate glass laboratory beaker. It was recovered from an abandoned storage facility in USA. SCP-535's origin has been traced to a glassware factory in owned by the corporation. Save its manufacture of SCP-535, no evidence of any extranormal activity has been found in relation to said factory or corporation. All liquid touching the inner surface of SCP-535 will immediately transform into a pale, translucent liquid of viscosity 1.511 CP, approximately the viscosity of mercury, from here on designated as SCP-535-1. Other forms of matter are not affected. Analysis of SCP-535-1 has revealed that it is composed of approximately 36% water. However, the remaining 46% encompasses 14 previously unknown substances. It is fit for human consumption, disregarding the non-chemical effects of SCP-535, and produces no visible reactions. When SCP-535-1 is poured out of SCP-535 and comes into contact with a solid or liquid surface, it instantaneously evaporates, leaving no discernible trace. When various forms of information storage or transmission comes within one meter of SCP-535-1, SCP-535-1 will activate and change color depending on the nature of the source. The following colors have been observed. Red. All digital media, computers, compact discs, etc. Orange. Radio waves. Yellow. Sound waves. Lime green. Photographic film. Blue. Text and physical visual imagery. The precise hue of blue has been observed to change depending on the medium the text or images are transcribed on. Purple. Magnetic tape. White. The human brain. Black. Data expunged. Analysis of activated SCP-535-1 shows it to be chemically identical to inactivated SCP-535-1. SCP-535-1 appears to absorb information from its surroundings. If activated SCP-535-1 is poured out of SCP-535, it will subsequently transmit the data it has contained to whatever it lands on, if it is compatible in some way. For example, if activated SCP-535-1 comes into contact with a computer and is then poured onto a different computer, the information from the first computer will be copied to the second. 
If activated SCP-535-1 was poured onto any non-digital device in this case, there would be no effect. In both situations, SCP-535-1 would evaporate and disappear. The amount of SCP-535-1 utilized appears to have no effect, and multiple transmissions of data can be made by conserving the contents of SCP-535. Pouring activated SCP-535-1 on the device which initially activated it has no effect. The various forms of electromagnetic waves able to activate SCP-535-1 will be retransmitted to the surroundings, regardless of the object SCP-535-1 is poured on. Physical text and images will be transcribed onto any solid surface in the areas where SCP-535-1 is poured onto. Note that text displayed on a digital screen is considered digital media, rather than print. This is invariably in the same medium the text was originally written in. Any large collection of text is usually unreadable, as it is resized to fit inside the area in contact with SCP-535-1, and only a relatively small amount of SCP-535-1 is available at any one time, due to SCP-535's small size. When a living human comes within range of SCP-535-1, SCP-535-1 turns white. However, human memories and thoughts are not retransmitted with the same efficiency as other information. The effects of pouring active white SCP-535-1 onto another person are highly unpredictable. In benign situations, the subject may acquire a minor fact or memory. Far more common, however, is mental illness, including but not limited to schizophrenia, disassociative identity disorder, severe anxiety, or generalized hallucinations. Schizophagia is also a common effect. In the most extreme cases, coma, followed by death, may occur. So far, no pattern has been discerned as to the potential effects of active white SCP-535-1. Further testing with caution is warranted. The mental contents of other beings do not affect SCP-535-1, with the exception of data expunged, resulting in data expunged. Addendum Dr. Wood has suggested using the replicative properties of SCP-535 with regards to physical media to reproduce substances of value to the Foundation. This proposal has been approved by O5-2, and preliminary experimentation has been scheduled. Item Number SCP-545 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-545 is considered to be three individual parts, and thus, each part may be stored differently. SCP-545-A is to be kept in a two-room residential containment unit at Site-17, furnished to her liking. To date, she has not requested a TV, radio, nor any contact with the outside world beyond a walk through a park or woods at least once per week, available to her upon request. During said excursions, she is to be accompanied by a team of four armed security personnel and at least one researcher familiar to her. SCP-545-A is allowed to leave her containment and spend time in Level 0 and common areas, provided that she notify two Level 2 security personnel ahead of time and is supervised during the duration of her leaving her room. SCP-545-A poses no immediate threat to any personnel, provided that they are reminded not to make assumptions about her strength, speed, or intelligence based upon her appearance. All samples and bottles of SCP-545-B are to be packaged and placed in the appropriate storage unit, under lock. Only authorized Level 4 security personnel or higher may be allowed to handle, transport, or study SCP-545-B. Drinking SCP-545-B is strictly forbidden and punishable by immediate termination, unless under testing protocol. All requests to study and test SCP-545-B must be submitted at least a week in advance and approved by a head of site research, if not an O5 level operative. SCP-545-A's unit is also able to contain a small garden under sun lamps, available for her to work in. No poisonous plants are allowed after Incident 545-6B. 
SCP-545-C is to be locked in a quad-locked secure storage vault in Site-17's precious items wing. Description SCP-545 may be determined as three separate parts. SCP-545-A appears to be an elderly woman, presumably of Eastern European descent. 1.5 meters or 5 feet in height and 73.9 kilograms, or 163 pounds in weight, giving her a short, plump build. Her skin, although deeply tanned and heavily lined, is devoid of blemishes or liver spots otherwise common with age. Her hair is thick, completely white, and past her waist when let down, although 545A prefers to keep it up in a tight bun. Her eyes, despite her age, are a bright, clear blue and devoid of cataracts or fogginess. As a reward for good behavior and cooperation, she has been allowed to choose a wardrobe of simple and traditional dresses and eyeglasses. Despite appearing to be 80 plus years old, 545A is in exceptional health, with no weakening of the heart, bones, or respiratory system. And although of average human strength, her senses are noted to be above average, and she scores a general 115 on a standard IQ test. SCP-545-A claims to be over 800 years old. This claim has yet to be disproved. SCP-545-A prefers to be called a number of names and dislikes the SCP designation number. She will respond to Granny, Beatrice, Miss Widow, and has taken a liking to Dr. R's nickname for her, Totenkinder. She displays a generally pleasant personality and enjoys activities such as sewing, cooking, and gardening. SCP-545-A often requests conversations and walks outside as well. Despite SCP-545-A's penchant for acting like a kindly older woman, she displays no remorse for her use of SCP-545-B and C. SCP-545-A also displays a pathological fear of death and an addiction to SCP-545-B and she complies with Foundation personnel under threat of being deprived of her supply of SCP-545-B. As the only known long-term user of SCP-545-B, 545-A's information is considered invaluable. SCP-545-B is a colorless, odorless liquid extracted from the body via 545-C and bottled. It is often dubbed liquid life due to its properties. Under examination, 545B appears to be slightly more viscous than water, but varies in direct texture and taste. 545B has no unique properties until ingested. Drinking SCP-545B extends the life of the user, slowing the process of aging and often either slowing or completely ridding the body of disease. It may even be used to heal major wounds if drunk quickly enough. Repeated use of SCP-545-B may prolong life indefinitely, but results in a strong dependency upon its properties, and many frequent users show borderline sociopathic tendencies in regards to the creation of SCP-545-B. To date, the SCP Foundation keeps a limited supply of SCP-545-B and allows for production only for study of SCP-545-C. SCP-545-C is a thin weathered sheet of yellow parchment, in surprisingly good condition. Carbon dating places it to be at least 600 years old. SCP-545-A claims to have copied SCP-545-C from the original document containing SCP-545-C's instructions. For lack of a better term, SCP-545-C contains a recipe in Middle English for extracting and distilling SCP-545-B from the human body. Full contents of SCP-545-C are undisclosed in order to prevent unauthorized personnel from creating SCP-545-B. Key portions include Ingredients list, including such materials as live leeches, skullcap seeds, chicken fetuses, snake skin, ginger root, mandrake root, Lily of the Valley water, spider eggs, and nearly two dozen more items in varying amounts. The most prominent ingredient appears to be a living human being, preferably a child. 
Multiple ingredients on this list have been noted to match the ingredients used in instances of SCP-2077. Supplies list, including a boiling pot large enough for a child or other human, along with water and many ingredients, and a strainer made from fresh spider webs, among other things. Instructions list, detailing rather elaborately the exact amount of materials and timing needed to successfully create, distill, and bottle SCP-545-B. SCP-545-A is able to recite and act upon SCP-545-C by heart. The exact mechanisms of the process that creates SCP-545-B are still unidentified. Magic is not an acceptable answer. There has to be some sort of process here that allows for this to happen. It can't just happen because it works. Dr. Addendum SCP-545 was located in a small Midwestern town, under the guise of an elderly woman with mild dementia. The woods her residential neighborhood were located in led to an area near a river that was prone to sinkholes and had a small history of children becoming lost or dying in the woods before. Her neighbors described her as kind and caring, and had no suspicions that she may be anything more than a lonely elderly widow with a penchant for giving neighborhood kids small treats in return for collecting their used glass bottles. She was located and captured by Data Expunged. From SCP-545-A's own memory, she has been repeating the same process for quite a while. She buys a small house in a relatively dangerous area and keeps the supplies for SCP-545-C with her or manages to find and produce them. She collects glass bottles via the neighborhood and over time gains their trust. She describes the process of capturing children for SCP-545-C as being relatively easy. She simply goes for a walk and pretends to be lost, or talks kids into accompanying her home under the promise of food and candy. She admits to doing this at least once every five years or more. She claims to have been using this process for at least 800 years but has admitted that even though her aging has slowed to a crawl, it hasn't stopped completely, no matter how much SCP-545-B she produces and ingests. SCP-545-B is not to be used or distributed, even in cases of emergency. Failure to comply will result in termination. 05 Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, Subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.